Yes, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome to uh, uh, Qualysys webinar. Today we are talking about real-time motion capture with QTM Connect and SDKs. Um, so um, the presenting, uh, the one talking now, that's uh, me, Erwin Schoenderwald, uh, the host. I'm uh, working in the field applications and support team. So um, basically dealing with technical questions, uh, installations, um, helping customers, uh, helping uh, other people needing that. And we have uh, today uh, with us Lars Nielsen who is uh, uh, the software development team and he is helping out with uh, the questions. And uh, Lars is uh, very uh, skilled and uh, very expert in the, um, especially in the real-time applications. So he is a good uh, one to, to ask questions to if you have any, you can do it now. So just a little bit about the webinar itself. Um, you can see you have a control panel which you can expand. Uh, here you can recommend to put in full screen mode so that you can see the examples uh, the best. Um, well, in red here, if you don't have the audio set, if you don't hear me now, you should check the audio settings um, because it should work. And you have the possibility to enter your questions in the in the questions bar which you can expand and there you can put your questions so the agenda for today um, well the, the meaning with this webinar is that we give an overview of the real-time motion capture possibilities with qtm so that's what we will be doing uh, we will be talking about uh, the protocols which are supported then i have some more information about yeah, the latencies we can expect which uh, yeah, can be dependent on cameras, for example. I'm going to talk about the, the real-time software development kits, the SDKs for QTM. Then we have a couple of ready-made implementations, which are our QTM Connect clients. And then we have a few demonstrations. One of the basic ones, RT client example, which is including QTM, a lab view and MATLAB, and maybe even motion builder we have to see if we have the time for that and uh, i will end with uh, some useful links and uh, training resources there so real-time motion capture with qtm how does it work well basically what we uh, do when when you have a measurement in preview in qtm if your camera is running you will qtm will actually act as a server and you can have several kinds of client applications which can connect to the QTM server. And uh, the communication is going through the through the network, so we have a network communication. So yeah, the uh, the good things here is that we have uh, real-time streaming of motion capture data. It's uh, with very low latency. Uh, we have these different uh, connect imp uh, implementations, uh, for example, for MATLAB, for for Unity. And then we have also the SDKs, for example, for C++ or C Sharp, Python. And um, yeah, you can, um, if you have another kind of programming language you want to, to implement this in, uh, you want to, to talk to QTM through another thing, which is not, for which we don't have any connect module or an SDK, uh, it's even possible to make your own implementation based on the documented real-time protocol. So the network communication, the, the way the packages are structured, are actually um, open and, and documented. And so it's yeah, no problem to, to make your, your own implementation if, if there's anything not available from, from our side. Of course, we try to be very complete in what we offer, but uh, it's not possible to, to offer everything. So yeah, the protocols being supported is we have our own RT protocol. This is included in the QTM distribution. You can find the documentation there as well. Um, and then we have another protocol called OSC or Open Sound Control. Um, that's yeah, another type of programs which can can be used for that. It's basically uh, for yeah, computer music applications in which you want to do real-time streaming and interact, interactive music systems. And we have uh, support for uh, 
VRPN, Virtual Reality Peripheral Network. It's uh, another standard which is used a lot for uh, different kinds of VR applications. And then uh, this is a little bit separate uh, topic, but we also have the possibility to control QTM via a built-in web server, a RESTful API. So that's maybe also useful to, to know in this context. So we can, uh, with the real-time uh, applications, uh, this um, yeah, where the clients can, can retrieve data from QTM. And there's yeah, several types of data which we can stream of which you see an overview here. So here, this is actually um, this RT client example where you have the choice for different types of data. So we can stream 2D data from the cameras, different types of 3D data with or without residuals, um, without labels or with labels, uh, six stuff data, gaze factors. And then we also have data which is uh, from the integrated devices. So for example, the analog board, uh, force plates, uh, eye trackers, and uh, and uh, yeah, all these kinds of things which are integrated in QTM can also be streamed. And then it's possible to stream camera images and uh, and time code. Uh, yeah, mentioning skeleton data, of course, for the latest additions as well. So there's basically yeah, all types of data which are available in QTM can also be streamed. And on top of that, it's also possible to um, to use the RT um, yeah, real-time communication for sending control commands to QTM. So in certain implementations, you can also start uh, measurements in QTM and then yeah, perform all kinds of tasks, create events and, and these kind of things. So there's there's a lot of different possibilities there. And so QTM control commands are, well, I'll show that later, but it's not supported by all the clients we have. So some words on latency. Um, this is sometimes a little bit uh, confusing what you talk about when you talk about latency. So that's why we have specified what we talk about here. And you'll find it in the documentation, of course, as well. So the um, latency consists of the, the latency from the cameras themselves. Uh, they have to uh, yeah, expose the image and then there's some processing on the camera. And then um, data is transferred to QTM and there will be processing there as well. And after that's done, the data will be sent to your uh, real-time client. So the, the camera part we consider as the camera latency, which is uh, specified separately. And then we have the system latency, which is the, the actual latency, latency you are working with uh, with your real-time client. Um, the last uh, 3D data transfer, the TCP IP part here, is actually uh, measured by uh, sending uh, the package to the cameras and comparing the timestamp from when, when the exposure was made uh, to the timestamp when the package, uh, the package is arriving back at the camera. Uh, this part may, of course, be a little bit different uh, because you're streaming over a different network as the camera network where you... Uh, stream to your real-time application. But it's, it gives a very good approximation. So the, the total latency depends on a couple of things. Uh, firstly, the camera latency depends on the camera type. It's not every camera is as fast and you have different modes for the cameras as well. Um, then in the processing part, it may depend on the complexity of your setup. So the number of cameras, also the number of markers and the amount of processing steps you do. Uh, and then finally, of course, uh, yeah, when you have a better computer, calculations are faster, so you will have um, yeah, lower latency with, with a better computer. Uh, what is nice in QTM is that you can actually show this, this actual system latency. And uh, I'm talking about this total latency from image exposure to sending or receiving the data package. And this can be shown in the status bar in QTM. So if you go to your product options, uh, press, um, select the GUI option here, the GUI tab, and there um, make sure that this one, show real-time latency, camera shutter to RT frame output is checked. And once you have checked that, you will see that when you start your cameras, that there is this latency being 
update it in the status bar of your QTM window, uh, together with your camera and for read time frequencies. So here we have some information about yeah, camera latencies, and here we, we have the system latencies estimated as well uh, for a certain situation. So uh, let's say up to 16 cameras and up to 100 markers, we have kind of estimated system latency here. And what you see here, we have our different cameras, which you currently provide, except for the three plus, I think, but that's um, still around. Um, and then we see that uh, for the normal sensor mode, which is uh, the highest resolution, we have the values of the la camera latency here. So it's as low as two uh, milliseconds uh, for, the, for the fastest camera, uh, up to uh, about 5.6 for the slowest camera. And if you um, switch your camera to a high speed mode, you, you can even get lower than that. So here you see the OCA 7 Plus is also really fast in the high speed because it's a, this is quite impressive also because it's a 12 megapixel camera, but here it becomes really fast as well. And um, so, so that's, that's also one factor which you can use to influence your real-time uh, latency. And as you see for the, for the system, there's, it's just adding a certain amount, um, I think, to about two milliseconds, we have um, added up to to come to the system latency, which is some kind of an approximation for yeah, most kind of situations. And as I said, you you can actually show this. That is the latency which is being shown in the QTM status bar there. So when you want to use real time and you have um, yeah you have requirements for for the speed. Uh, considering this kind of constraints, like what, what camera type be can become important uh, in combination also with the specifications of your computer, of course. So um, first I would like to show the real-time SDKs. Uh, so these are available on, on GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash qualysys, you will see the, the the different SDKs we have available there. They're all open source, so um, you can um, you can use it. You can extend expand it. You can uh, add your own things. And if you find things which you think may be useful for for uh, a lot of users, uh, of course you are also free to um, yeah, to add it to to add a contribution and uh, create a pull request. We are yeah always very Grateful for that if, if we have input from the customers, of course. So the SDKs which are available, we have for C++, which can be compiled on Windows and Linux. Uh, we have C Sharp, Python, JavaScript, uh, and I mentioned here Unity and Unreal. They are also mentioned uh, later as QTM Connect, but um, they're actually um, a set of scripts which also are open source, so you can uh, and they are available here on GitHub as well. And here we have an overview of the QTM Connect clients we have. Some of them actually requires a license. So these are indicated with, with a star here, for example, MATLAB Motion Builder and LabVIEW. Uh, so if you, if you don't have one and you want to use it, you can always uh, contact us and uh, ask for a trial, of course. Uh, so the clients we have here, MATLAB, Unity, Motion Builder. Uh, we have two mobile apps as well, which you find on uh, iOS, uh, Apple Store and Google. Uh, LabVIEW, Unreal, Maya, and iClone is actually not a QTM Connect client made by us, but it's integrated in, in iClone. So, so if you have a recent version of iClone, you will find the possibility to to connect to a Qualysys mocap system in there as well. And uh, iClone is, is really nice for, for making very, very quick um, yeah, character animations, setting it up, making nice dancing characters or whatever, what you like. 
So a little bit of an overview here of what kind of data types are supported by the different clients we have, the Connect clients, because it's a little bit different. Uh, as I mentioned, we have the 2D, 3D, 6 of data, etc. So I made an overview here. And we see with a lab view, uh, most of the things are supported except for skeleton. And this also gives, uh, with lab view, you can also control uh, QTM. So you can start measurements and such and create events from uh, from the interface or from the software. Uh, MATLAB is basically doing the same, except that we don't have QTM control there. And then um, Unity, Unreal, Motion Builder, Maya, they are more oriented towards uh, skeleton, uh, character animation, skeleton data is included there, of course. And um, yeah. also 3D data for, for basically all of them and uh, six of data for most of them. Uh, for Motion Builder, actually, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we have two different um, devices, it's called, I think. So it's one is for the opticals, uh, 3D, and the other one is for the skeleton data. And the one for the opticals also includes QTM control. Yeah, so that already brings me to the demos. That's going quickly. But I think um, perhaps it's nice if we see if there are some questions here. Oh, um, if Lars has answered. So um, if Lars want to see if there's anything here. I see, okay, there's one question, the last one which came in. If I can, if we can introduce some video resources for learning QTM and mocap system, yeah, sure. I will uh, include that. That's included in the links at uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, so I can already show it. Of course, we go to the to the qualities. Oh, that's just QTM. Oh. Let's see. We go to our qualities website. Uh, actually, you, you can find a lot of uh, training material here under the video tutorials. So you go to qualisys.com. That's the main page here. And you'll find the video tutorials here. If you click to that, on that, you come directly to Q Academy program. And there you will find a lot of training material. And currently we have actually opened up a few more uh, videos public. We have about 40 uh, public videos currently. Uh, some of them temporary public, but uh, I included, we included uh, some of them uh, on the SDKs we have and the Unity, uh, the, the QTM Connect uh, modules as well. So, so these, these are currently open. Uh, unfortunately, except for MATLAB, because this one was uh, talking about the previous version, which we have not updated yet in, in the training material. Um, but um, for the, Documentation is also included in all the clients. So when you download the client or it's uh, what's available in the QTM installation, there's documentation included there as well. Yeah, so I think um, I'm Continuing to the demos here, and then in the end we will have some more time to um, to, to to talk about the questions. So, excuse me, Aaron. Um, oh yes, yes. It, it, hmm? uh, it doesn't. I don't see the the questions. There used to be some oh. problem with the webinar and stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, if you, oh, I, I can just unmute my mic and. And answer the questions that you, if you don't know. Um, you, so um, I don't even see the questions. Uh, I, I can't write anything in the answer field. Is, is oh yeah, oh, that's, yeah. That's anyway, for so, no, that's very unfortunate. Um, yeah. So I think what I what we best do then is that we. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go on with the demonstrations, and then we'll see how much time we have in the end to go through no, some of the questions at least. And yeah, then uh, so we can, we will, the possibility. We have, we'll have the questions saved so we can uh, answer them offline also. 
and later on if we we don't can't um, go through all the questions yeah so ex exactly if the questions cannot be addressed now because we have limited time uh, we will be able to uh, to come back to get back to you afterwards um, maybe uh, it, it will take a couple of days but uh, we will we'll certainly get back uh, with with some answers and contact you by email so i will continue with the demos now i wanted to start with uh, the actually the simplest implementation we have it's included in uh, in qtm so to find my file explorer yes there it is so there's a lot of windows open on the other one so it takes sometimes some time to find so if we if you go to the colossus uh, installation you see you have in program files colossus qtm and the rt protocol is this one of the subfolders there you will find um yeah this this is actually the c plus plus SDK, which is included in the install. We have the source code there. We have uh, the QTM RT protocol documentation, a PDF. And then uh, we have included a RT client example based on the um, C++ SDK. So th this is basically a very useful tool if you want to, um, to debug your real-time client, uh, your own real-time client, because sometimes if you don't get data you you wonder is qtm actually streaming data do do i get the data i need and th this is a very useful resource for actually checking what qtm is delivering and if uh, this this yeah will allow you to see if the problem is in the streaming itself or or if it's if not then then you have to to look in your own client application and see what what is going on there so when you start this, you get a very simple console, and um, there you can just go through these uh, choices you have. So basically the first thing you always have to do is to connect to your QTM server. So um, click, clicking on enter, this, this will be the default option. So there we connect now to the, to the local host. And so we have QTM running on my computer. Wait a minute, I will just start a measurement here. We can play this with real-time output. So if you you can also use this for debugging. So if you have a recorded file, you can play it with real-time output, and that's then simulating that um, QTM is actually streaming data in real time. So that's also a useful way of debugging your thing. So now we have something moving there, and uh, we can keep it here. And then we'll go through the, the other choices. So yeah, we have different uh, protocols versions here. So we choose the newest one. And then, yeah, there's a couple of questions here, like yeah, the, the way your byte order, and we would just want to do normal data transfer in this case. And here then is the choice for what type of data we want to stream. So, well, let's, look at the 3D data with residual. So that will be choice number four. Uh, there's a couple of different transfer modes, TCP or UDP here. So I'll take the, the TCP one, not logging, and we are streaming all frames. And uh, we'll just show the output on the screen. So when you go through all these choices, then you'll see, hey, we here we have the 3D data from, from all the the trajectories, the labeled trajectories we have, they are being streamed here. So you should be able to see the X, Y, Z values here as well. At least the X and the Y. And you see this, this is the same data being streamed now uh, over, yeah, over the network to, to our simple client application. So that's uh, the first thing. And you see uh, yeah, all the choices being involved there connecting to QTM, the different choices you have to connect and the, the choice of which data to stream. They're all basically, that's the basics of all the um, client applications when you are implementing those. So I pressed escape to, so. 
well, just quitting this then. So that that was the first uh, very simple one. I think that's always nice to to show that that we have that possibility to to look at your 3D data just with all the things we include in QTM. Okay, yeah, there's maybe a few more things I would like to show in QTM as well, because there's a couple of settings which relate to uh, real-time streaming. So here, for example, we have um, basically a real-time output under the product options. Um, yeah, you can set the ports if you don't want to use the defaults, because not something you most people need to do. Uh, and this is uh, the client control part. You can, um, yeah, allow or um, deny that. And you can also set a password. So client control means that the QTM can be controlled from your client application. So you need to explicitly allow for that and you can um, also protect that by setting a password. A couple of other things I already pointed out here, the show real-time latency option you can set, but there's a couple of other things which can influence the, the the prestation or the, the achievement of your computer. So you can uh, lower screen update rates, for example, to 15 hertz uh, for the video as well, or you can even deselect real-time mode in your screen updates. Uh, so, so then more resources of your computer are available for for the actual real-time streaming um, and, and not being used for, for doing graphical calculations to, to show things on the screen in QTM. So there's a couple of things you can, can use to, to optimize your real-time streaming as well. And uh, of course, one more thing is we can choose the uh, marker capture frequency here. Um, except of that for the real-time frequency, we can also use a reduced real-time frequency. So if you're using very high capture rates, you can um, purposefully reduce your real-time frequency to a value which, yeah, um, the cameras and QTM can keep up with. Um, as soon as the marker capture frequency will become too fast, QTM will automatically uh, trap down to, to a lower frequency, usually half of the frequency. Uh, so, so that is something you can see when you're streaming. Uh, is you, you can, the frequency are being reported in the status at the lower right in, of QTM. So I guess the, the next one I wanted to show, either MATLAB or LabVIEW. I think I'll start with a LabVIEW. Oh, I need to log in back to the, so, so I'm showing this on a remote desktop. Just need to log in again. So I already prepared the example here. Um, let's see, so if you have uh, the uh, LabVIEW client, uh, what, what is included is this QLC demo. Uh, so you can, uh, th this uh, actually gives an example of most of the things you can implement in um, yeah, concerning the streaming in LabVIEW. And uh, it's, it's the same thing. So you can specify the network address here. In this case, it's localhost, uh, the port, the type of data you want to stream. Uh, and here is uh, the, yeah, the connect button. So, so you can press the connect button. You can choose if you want to control QTM or not. Uh, switch that on for now. And um, yeah, here's a couple of control commands we have available in LabVIEW. So you can, for example, we can start the recording from here. So I'll just give it a go now. Um, we are on the local host here again with another instance of QTM, of course. I'm going to play this file with real-time output. Uh, the file is in, also included in the LabVIEW uh, install, uh, when you install the LabVIEW thing. And uh, here, um, in this example, we have to press the run continuously button. So then, then we're running here. Uh, so I need to connect to QTM and then we already see that we have data streaming. We have some analog data in there. Uh, we have a couple of richer bodies. We have some markers. Uh, so I'll just show you that I can, uh, when I press stop capture, you see that uh, 
things are stopping moving there. There wasn't so much movement to see, but there was one, one body moving at least. And we can start real time from file. Well, the bodies are currently still anyway, but we see that the timeline is running now and now the body is moving. So, so again, stop capture, we stop here and start real time from file. We start playing the file. So here you can also start a new live measurement. You can start and stop a capture and that kind of things. And we can, in this way, yeah, as a dial, you can show different markers. They are displayed, the values here. Uh, we have a couple of graphs showing the data coming in for the richer bodies, for example. We have some analog data being being shown here. You can show the time code. So this, this patch, um, if you want to show the block diagram, this can give you some ideas of how to implement the uh, the things we have available in this um, uh, in the in this client application. So so you can make your own blocks based based on this example or your own virtual instruments, as they are called in LabVIEW. So I'll just stop it here again. Stop this one and see. And so it's really unfortunate that Lars doesn't see the questions because I don't have time to to both present and answer the questions. But I see that there are some questions coming in, so we we will do take care to to answer these these questions. Um, yeah, one of them is uh, I see a question by Amy Morton. Uh, real time. Uh, is throttling down automatically. Uh, so what's considered a high frequency? Well, that depends a little bit, of course, on the, the cameras uh, you're using and the amount of processing being done. Um, so in most of the cases uh, for, yeah, if, if you're using very high frequencies, you will see that uh, QTM is not uh, yeah, coming up again, but it's certainly possible to, to do streaming uh, up to about 200 Hertz. Uh, without any problems, so it's um, and you can of course see. Uh, okay, now there's one thing I can. Just a second, I, I'm going to share my screen with my with with Lars, my colleague here, so that he can have a look at these questions. But. So I think you should be able to see that now. Um, uh, it's becoming a lot of different presentations going on at the same time. So here we go. Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Um, well. Good. I think I'll just continue with the uh, with the latest example, because otherwise we are also running out of time. I see uh, we have the, the MATLAB uh, application there as well. I need to log in here as well. So here uh, it's the same thing. If you using the MATLAB or you've downloaded the MATLAB, uh, install the MATLAB client application, there's examples included there. Um, so this is the, the simplest example is QCM demo see if that's yeah, basically again in your program files here um, there's QTM connect for MATLAB and this is what is included there so we have the documentation there as well uh, we have a, a file with some data you can use for yeah, as an example and then we have um, yeah the QCM application here and here we have the uh, demo examples so so this is the one i've opened now it's uh, available to everybody who is using this and it's the same thing um, basically the first call to qcm uh, closest connect from matlab is we have to make a connect call provide the ip address and then provide what type of data we want to to stream uh, once we have initiated this connection, we can collect some information, for example, the names of the 3D labels or the six of rigid bodies. And then in, in a loop, we can retrieve the data by just calling QCM command again, and then 
retrieving the information we, we wanted to receive in the order provided here. And at the end, you, you send a disconnect command. So basically here in the loop, it's um, receiving this data. I can just, uh, okay. MATLAB looks a bit strange here, but I hope it will work. As a QCM demo, uh, I let it run for 100 frames or so. Well, first I will need to start running this again with real-time output. So there we have some moving objects. And basically this demo is doing nothing more than putting the values which are received for a number of frames on your screen. So here it's showing you all the data you have been asking for and it's just plotting it on, in the command window. So that, that is basically, and around these commands, you, you, you can build your own, your own script or your own functions. Uh, but this is the, the backbone basically for, for this client application. And uh, there's one little bit more complicated example included here, which is taking some data and making a plot. That's maybe useful for if you want to plot, um, because plotting in uh, MATLAB is, is notoriously slow. So uh, we have done implemented some tricks here to, to make sure that it's not introducing too much latency and that you have some reasonable um, yeah, graphic information in the meanwhile. It's, it's still slowing down a bit, so you may end up with a couple of missing frames. And we actually account for them here in the script. It shows also how you can collect information about uh, the, the, the frames which, which have been being skipped here. So basically the setup is the same. Um, we have a first QTM connect call, uh, then uh, we retrieve some information about which six of bodies we have. And in the here we are setting up the graph, so it's a bit too much detail now to go through. Uh, but in the loop here, for the number of frames asked for, uh, here we actually get for each uh, iteration the the information from uh, from QTM, and this is the uh, information we are asking. And then uh, all the things around it is for um, yeah doing the plots and and uh, optimizing that. So you see what I'm using actually, and that is quite important that you use, if you update the plots, uh, actually what I'm doing is um, I have a buffer of Y data, which is constantly replaced in the plot. Uh, so so we actually we just update um, uh, an array here. And then um, after initializing the plot and the axes, we are injecting the data in this. Uh, you can see that here it's done in the, in the axis handle, we are putting in the refreshed data. Uh, and we don't use the plot command here because that will be very slow. Uh, but instead, we, we, we just change um, exchange the, uh, the Y data in the figure object. And then we use a draw now command with the uh, limit rate and uh, also use the no callbacks. Because um, yeah, if you don't use the limit rate, you will, don't, you will not see anything in the figures. Uh, until your program is is ready, uh, so so this this is very important to to use this way of of plotting, if you want to see anything. So I can just quickly uh, show how this looks like. We have the QCM demo plot, and well, again, have a couple of frames being plotted here. Have the same data running here. So here it's basically a plot with a running uh, graph. Mm -hmm. So you see just here the, of the first ratio body, the X, Y, Z, and the your pitch roll information being being plotted here. So um, this QCM demo plot is also included if you purchase this uh, MATLAB license and if you download the latest versions of that. So. That brings me to the end of the presentation. So I don't think we have time for the motion builder now. Um, I see we have. Yeah, we have a couple of questions. Um, so I see if there's anything here.
yeah, there's somebody who asked how has the real-time connect evolved in the past few years? Um, so there was a question by Amy Morton. Uh, so I don't actually know what kind of part of the real-time connect we've been using, but um, asking how it has been evolved in the last few years, like four years or so. Um, and I think, yeah, I can answer to that. We, we are constantly yeah, adding new types of data. So lately, skeleton data has been added, for example. Uh, we have um, yeah, all kinds of yeah, gaze factors and, and this kind of things. So, so it's slowly evolving with QTM. Whenever we have new things in QTM, we update it. Uh, we optimize, of course. Um, uh, new re releases are, are being improved. Sometimes we've some bugs are found and they are improved. Um, we add new features. Uh, sometimes customers need certain features to be implemented uh, for for the applications, and uh, they talk to us. So we can. Um, yeah, there, there can be things like I think recently starting a calibration from the real time. Um, uh, in real time is, is one of these things. So yeah, keep an eye on what happens on uh, on GitHub. There, there's information about the new releases there. Um, and um, the same with um, uh, the, the modules uh, we have. Some of them are more active than others. Uh, recently, the MATLAB has been uh, having a complete overhaul, actually. Uh, so, so it has been uh, much improved. Um, some 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 newer possibilities, uh, also optimized for the newer versions of MATLAB. So they they are being uh, maintained uh, basically. I think I'll just go through some shorter questions here. Um, there was a, a question if there is any uh, ROS node. Um, yeah, so if you go to GitHub, there is um, there's a packet. Uh, there's some information available or some um, yeah. a module for for uh, ROS robot operating system. So just go to our GitHub site. Uh, I will have to show. So I forgot that, of course, is the the latest slide I have here is the the links. So here we have uh, the link to GitHub. You can go there. Um, as I said, the RT protocol documentation is included in the QTM installer, but it's also available online. Uh, we have the Q Academy videos I already shortly showed, where we have a couple of tutorials freely available now for, for the SDKs and for QTM Connect modules. And I also certainly recommend to, to look at previous webinars. Uh, I didn't talk about Unity, for example, this this one, but we had one last week in which a lot of things on how to stream data to Unity ha have been shown. So if you are interested in Unity, definitely go to, to last week's webinar. Um, and another thing is uh, we have next week, we have another webinar again, uh, Meshes and QTM. Uh, so yeah, go to our website and sign up if you want to know how to to use meshes in QTM. It's a new feature again, where you can place graphical objects in your QTM environment. So sorry that we uh, couldn't uh, be more interactive for the questions. Uh, kind of didn't work out uh, with Lars sitting at home. I don't know why, but we will certainly get back to you with, with answers to the questions you have been asking. And yeah. Thank you for your attention and hope to see you next time again.